get ready. When Universal Orlando Resort planned to build a second theme park, the general idea was for it to be a cartoon based park. This idea was eventually scrapped and areas like Jurassic Park and the Lost Continent were included in Islands of Adventure. We can still see remnants of the cartoon park though in Marvel Superhero Islands, Toon Lagoon and Seuss Landing. It's probably good that Universal didn't limit themselves to just cartoons for this park, as we probably wouldn't have the Wizarding World of Harry Potter as we know it today. As a result of constantly changing plans for this park, many concepts and ideas were left in its wake. This list will cover the unbuilt history of Islands of Adventure. We did an unbuilt episode for Universal Studios Florida which you should check out afterwards too. We've got a whopping 15 rides that were planned but never built, including lands that never saw the light of day. We'll go through each land and list the rides that were never built. Get ready. DC Superhero Island Number 15, Batcar Dark Ride Marvel Superhero Island was initially planned to be DC themed, with Batman being the main character of the area. This plan fell through due to Warner Brothers and Universal being unable to settle on a royalty percentage, which also saw the Looney Tunes area being scrapped. More on that later. The flagship attraction for this area was set to be the Batcar Dark Ride. This would have seen guests whipped around Gotham City and the Axis Chemicals plant from the 1989 Batman film. While it never happened, one can imagine it would have been somewhat similar to The Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man, given that it's the dark ride in the area that we got instead. In order to save some of the concepts for this area, Universal approached Marvel for licensing rights. As we all know, this went ahead and we have Marvel Superhero Island today. Number 14, Batman vs Penguin. Another idea for this area was a dueling coaster that would be themed to a battle between Batman and Penguin. Penguin was the main villain from the 1992 Batman Returns film. Guests would hang from suspended cars and choose either the hero or the villain and race and battle above the streets of Gotham. Other special effects and pyrotechnics were to be included, suggesting that the ride would have some dark ride elements. Although this ride was never built, it likely had some inspiration for dueling dragons, the now defunct dueling coasters that were in the Lost Continent across the park. We also got the Incredible Hulk coaster in Marvel Superhero Island, so we're not too upset. Number 13, The Amazing Adventures of Superman? Another potential landmark attraction for the DC area could have been a Superman dark ride. The concept art for this never built attraction has a lot of similarities with The Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man. Guests would enter the queue through the Daily Planet, a newspaper office, and jump into a helicopter to tour the city of Metropolis. Things would go awry and suddenly you would be following Superman through his fight with Lex Luger. Sound familiar? While many ideas were put together for this area of the park, this one seems the furthest along in terms of artwork, and seems like it was minorly restructured to suit a Spider-Man themed ride instead. This type of ride lends itself well to customization, as we can see with the Transformers The Ride 3D. Perhaps we'll get another in the coming years. Number 12, Joker's Madhouse. The last big concept for DC Superhero Island was an indoor coaster themed to DC's biggest villain. This ride would be in Gotham and be a villainous contrast to the heroic Batman attraction. The queue would bring guests through Joker's warehouse where he builds gags and pranks to use against Batman. These would be interactive and keep guests busy while they wait to board. Once on board, the coaster itself would also have pranks and gags such as a jack-in-the-box, confetti, going through a vortex tunnel and broken tracks, similar to what we see on Expedition Everest over in Animal Kingdom in Walt Disney World. The Joker's trickery makes for a great ride concept, but sadly it never came to be. Unfortunately, DC Superhero Island will only ever be an unbuilt part of the history of Islands of Adventure. Toon Lagoon Number 11, Rocky the Flying Squirrel Coaster when the plan for Islands of Adventure was still to be a cartoon based park, Toon Lagoon was due to be a much more significant land than it is today. Universal had signed the theme park rights to Jay Ward's animated characters. We got Dudley Do Right's Ripsaw Falls, but we were supposed to get a roller coaster too. Ward's most popular cartoon characters were Rocky and Bullwinkle, and they were supposed to have a huge presence in Toon Lagoon. Rocky the Flying Squirrel was due to have his very own roller coaster. This likely never came about due to the park not being solely based on cartoons and the Incredible Hulk coaster and Dueling Dragons being favoured for roller coaster themes. Number 10, Popeye's Dark Ride. Popeye's area was also supposed to have two attractions, Popeye and Bluto's build wrap barges as we have it today and a dark ride to call Popeye's Adventure. The boat ride would take you through the peaceful village of Sweet Haven until villains would capture Popeye's friends and you would take off after them. 
The bilge rack barges that we know and love was initially just to be called Bluto's bilge rack barges, being the villainous counterpart to Popeye's ride, similar to the Batman and Joker in DC Superhero Island. When this ride was scrapped, they added Popeye's name to the barges ride to tie it all together. Surprisingly, the hero and villain double ride concept is something that has never been realised in Universal Orlando Resort. Maybe one day. Jurassic Park Number 9. Helicopters When talking about the unbuilt history of Islands of Adventure, we would be remiss if we didn't mention Jurassic Park. It is one of the best islands in the park, with a classic like Jurassic Park River Adventure and the upcoming Velocicoaster. The franchise lends itself really well to a theme park section, given that Jurassic Park is a theme park of sorts in itself in the books and films. But many concepts have been planned and never built for how to best play into this. One of the biggest concepts was helicopters. This would have been an attraction similar to Soren over in Epcot and Walt Disney World. Guests would be taken on a helicopter tour over Jurassic Park, seeing the mountains and dinosaurs below. No doubt we would have got up close and personal with the Tyrannosaurus Rex and some raptors. A screen based attraction for Jurassic Park would have made a lot of sense as dinosaur animatronics need to be really big and are probably very costly. However, universal screen based attractions can be very hit or miss, we're looking at you Jimmy Fallon, so it's probably best this never happened. Number 8. Jeep Safari A Jeep Safari adventure would make sense for Jurassic Park as it's one of the key elements of the film, but it was deemed too difficult to recreate the T-Rex scene and it wouldn't be worth doing without the T-Rex encounter. This was an initial concept before the river adventure was built. The river adventure is something that appears in the book and is actually a key plot in the book, but it never made it into the film. So this is a cool little easter egg for the lovers of the book. The Jeep Safari concept arose after river adventure was built as well, but the story and plot were too similar to the existing ride for it to get the go ahead. A velociraptor attack was set to be the key scene as opposed to the T-Rex scene in order to differentiate it, but it still never went ahead. Number seven, Raptor Racers. Another way to utilise a raptor chase scene and differentiate it enough from the river adventure was to build a wooden coaster themed around a raptor chase. Guests would race to escape the claws of velociraptors. A dark ride scene would conclude the ride, where the train would shake and have claw marks afterwards. While this version was never built, we're going to see a version of this ride very soon. A steel coaster is currently being built in the Jurassic Park area and is set to be named Velocicoaster. This will likely be themed to a raptor chase, similar to what we see in the 2015 film Jurassic World. Nonetheless, it's interesting to see the initial concept that was planned long before the movie franchise reboot. Number 6. Flying Coaster On the topic of Jurassic Park themed coasters, another idea was a flying coaster. If sources are to be believed, this would have been a B&M hypercoaster set in a huge aviary featuring pteranodons and pterodactyls. B&M's hypercoasters usually have massive drops, long tracks and lots of airtime, which would have been fitting for a flying themed attraction. We would have loved to see a huge coaster like this in Islands of Adventure. While we have some great coasters in Universal Orlando Resort, it does feel like it's missing a big coaster like this. We're unlikely to see this as we have the upcoming Velocicoaster, but we'd love to see a hypercoaster in this resort eventually. Looney Tunes Number 5. Duck Dodgers Space Adventure Another land caught up in the Warner Brothers licensing fiasco was Looney Tunes. This was an initial plan for the cartoon park. One of the key attractions in this area would have been centred around Daffy Duck. Duck Dodger's Space Adventure would be a space themed indoor coaster similar to Space Mountain in Magic Kingdom. This attraction would have also featured Marvin the Martian, another popular character from the Looney Tunes cartoons. Not much concept art exists for this idea, suggesting it might have been just an initial idea of what could be, rather than a fully planned attraction. It's fascinating to see this piece of history of Islands of Adventure and what could have been. Number 4. Wiley Coyote and the Roadrunner Coaster Another big coaster for this area of the park was an outdoor coaster themed to Wiley Coyote and the Roadrunner cartoons. The scenery from these cartoons would work well as a backdrop for the area and the plan was to have a Desert Canyon skyline that the coaster would blend into. This sounds similar to the scenery we can see in Cars Land over in Disney California Adventure. Similarly to Duck Dodger's Space Adventure, this wasn't more than a general idea of what was possible with the intellectual property. Going by everything that was planned for Islands of Adventure, it seems like every area had a coaster concept planned at one point or another. Perhaps this was to explore the potential of a given theme to see what worked, with the plan being to only really build two coasters overall. Either way, this whole area was ruled out when the Warner Brothers negotiations fell through. Van Helsing Number 3. A Van Helsing Dark Ride 
Van Helsing was one of Universal's highest grossing films in 2004, and its tie-in with the Dracula story means it's part of the Universal Monsters heritage, sort of. A new ride system had been developed that Universal wanted to utilise called the Kuka Robocoaster. This is the ride system used in Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. The system transports guests from scene to scene while giving the simulation of flying. Prior to Van Helsing's film release, this team had been proposed for use of this ride system. It was due to be an avenue off of the Lost Continent, meaning it would probably have been where Hogsmeade is now. The film received negative criticism, which may have been why the ride never went ahead. We're glad anyway, as we might not have Hogsmeade as we know it today. Van Helsing still had a minor presence in the parks as part of the Universal Horror Makeup Show next door, but never made a huge impact on the history of Islands of Adventure like its magical substitute. Seuss Landing Number 2, Noisarium On to our final land, Seuss Landing did indeed happen, but some ideas didn't quite make the cut. Noisarium is one of those ideas. This area was due to be an interactive place where guests could play instruments to join in with an orchestra of sound. It was supposed to be an after-show area for the Cat in the Hat dark ride. As we know, this area of the park is very busy, with many small attractions in a relatively small area. It's unclear why the noise area never happened, but we speculate that space and accessibility might have been an issue. And number one, Grinch's sleigh ride. Last but not least, the Grinch was set to have his very own family coaster in Seuss Landing. The Grinch is arguably Dr. Seuss's most popular character, and his sleigh ride makes for an interesting roller coaster concept. The idea would be for a Matterhorn-style mountain to tower over the area. This would obviously be Mount Crumpet and would house the roller coaster. The issue with this character though is that he's a seasonal guy and riding a grinch team ride in the height of summer might feel kind of strange. Universal seems to feel the same way, as the Grinch has very little presence in Seuss Landing outside of Christmas time. There's still free space around Seuss Landing though, so this could be something we possibly see in the future. Check out our unbuilt episodes for Universal Studios Florida and Animal Kingdom's Beastly Kingdom on screen now. Also check out our website at thefirstdrop.net for more content like this. That's our unbuilt history of Islands of Adventure. Which one of these rides would you have liked to have seen built? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe for new weekly content. And now you're ready.